everybody. I hope you're doing awesome. This time, I want to talk about arrays again. And last time, we kind of went over some theory. We talked about what an array was. We went over how to declare arrays and some stuff like that. But this time, I want to bring it into the Arduino IDE and actually write a program that uses an array. And what we want to do is we want to turn on a series of LEDs one by one and then turn them off. It's a real simple thing, real simple concept, but we're going to start simple with this simple program in Circuit before we get into more complex things because there's a lot of things you can do with arrays, but we're just going to start simple. So here is the schematic of the circuit we're going to build. And it's, it's again, real easy. We just have five LEDs. You don't have to use all the same color. And then five 220 ohm resistors connected to pins two through six. We're not going to use pin 0 and 1 because you, you kind of got to be careful with those pins. And we'll, we'll talk about that later. But it's just pins 2 through 6. And then, of course, we have the cathodes of the LEDs grounded here. So let's jump into the IDE and write some code. So here we are in the IDE. And we're just going to go ahead and start with a blank slate. First thing we need to do is declare an array. And we're going to use the array because arrays come in handy for storing things like pin numbers. And that's exactly what we're going to do with the array is we're going to store pin numbers. And I'm going to do this. And I know with arrays, if you've been programming in C or C++, your go-to is going to be an integer. But remember... We're working with a, a small microcontroller, doesn't have as much memory as a regular desktop computer would. So we don't need an integer to store the numbers 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. We're just going to use a byte. So we're going to declare an array of bytes, and we're going to call it LED pins. And it's going to have five elements. And we're going to go ahead and initialize those elements to the pin numbers. So we got two. 3, 4, 5, and 6, and then a semicolon. So all we really need to do is declare just this one array. And just so you know, if you remember from the last lesson, I could have left out this 5 and just did it like this because the compiler would see that we have 5 elements. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it there because you know we're beginners and we just want to remember how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it like that. But either way, you could do it. So now we got to get into setup. And I'm just going to make a comment here and write array of pin numbers real quick before we get into setup. And let me, I'm not the best typist, so don't be surprised if I make a lot of silly typing mistakes. But we need to designate the pins 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 as outputs. We talked about the pin mode function in a previous lesson. And we are going to use the array. And we are going to set it as an output. Now, notice here that I started with the array index of 0. Remember, guys, array indexing starts at 0, not 1. So this 0 refers to the first element here in this array. So 0 refers to pin 2. So let's go ahead, and we need to do this for all of the pins. And I'm just going to make it a copy and paste Again, we have to remember that array indexing starts at 0. So this index of 0 refers to pin 2, index of 1 refers to pin 3, and maybe I should just put a comment up here, kind of like a, a cheat. So, come on. This is just a little cheat comment here so you guys don't forget because this is really important to remember the indexing of arrays and remember that they start at 0, not 1. So we designated all these pins as outputs. And really there's nothing else to do in setup. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the loop. And this is where the meat of the program is going to go as usual. And we're going to use the digital write function. Digital write, let's see, LED pin. Uh, or pins, don't want to use the wrong variable name, that'll get you two, because here I use pins, and if I were to type pin here, 
I would have some errors. So we're going to start with the first element, and we're going to make that high. What I want to do is I want to see these things kind of come on one at a time instead of having it appear to come on all at once because, again, this is going to fly through this really fast. So I'm going to insert a small delay, and that has to be lowercase, of a half second, extra D there, so that way we can perceive them coming on one at a time. And then we need to do the same thing these other four LEDs and I want them to come on all of them to be on for long enough for us to perceive again that all of them are on. And remember delay is in milliseconds so I want let's do two seconds let's leave them on for two seconds and then we want to turn them all off so really, we just do the same thing, only in reverse. And instead of writing high, first thing we need to do is change that to low. And I'm going to go ahead and change all those, because now we're turning the LEDs off. So let's go ahead and change the highs to lows. And let's go ahead and change this. I want them to go off in the reverse order. Okay, two stays the same that they came on in. And just so you know what this is supposed to do, I have a little inset video here of the circuit working. I built it and programmed it before so you can see what's supposed to happen. So that's it. That's all we're really going to do here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I didn't accidentally introduce any errors by verifying it. Okay, it looks like there are no errors. It's done compiling. I don't have the board connected this time. But like I said, you should see, just like the little video I had inset there, you should be able to see the LEDs come on one at a time until they're all lit. They should stay lit for two seconds and then go off one at a time in reverse order. And then the thing just repeats. So that's really all there is to this program. Next time, we're going to do some more interesting stuff with arrays, and eventually we're going to pair them with for loops. And one more comment. I know that there's some of you guys here that have some experience programming and are looking at this saying, whoa, hey, man, there, there's a better way to do this. This is not the most efficient way. And you're right. But like I said, I want to keep things simple because not everybody here knows a lot about programming. I mean, some of you guys have no experience. Some of you guys have a little. Some of you guys have been programming, and you might know C, C++, like the back of your hand. And you might be saying, well, use a for loop. So we're going to get into other more interesting uses with arrays, but we're going to start simple like we did in this video, just by declaring an array, initializing it. A lot of times you won't initialize them. Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. It depends. But like I said, if you have some programming experience, don't freak out. This is just the beginning here, and we're going to start simple. So I will see you guys next time. Until then, give it a try. See if you can make them come on and off in different orders, or see if you can make them blink or something. You know, just, just get into the IDE, build a circuit, play with the code. That's how you learn. So I will see you guys next time.